is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to welcome back to the program Annette Whittemore, the founder and president of the Whittemore Peterson Institute, and her daughter Andrea, uh, both longtime guests on this program. And what an exciting time. Your facility is just about to open on the campus of the University of Nevada, uh, the Whittemore Peterson Institute. How excited are you? Well, first, I just want to thank you so much, Sam. You have been just wonderful to have host us on this show and allow us to talk about some of these exciting events. So I can't tell you, uh, it, it's almost unreal. It's been a long five years, but here it is. And so it feels like we just started yesterday. We're excited about uh, the grand opening coming up and all of the attention that this is bringing to the whole world of chronic fatigue syndrome and those who are sick with neuroimmune diseases. And literally, this is the world. I know whenever we've done programs in this, we have gotten people linking on the website from literally all over the world. You were essentially the reason this all came to be um, with, with your illness and suffering for so many years. Your mom just kind of took charge. What are your thoughts about what this institute can now do? Sam, that's very kind of you. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, yes, this is affecting patients around the world. and. Um, this opening is just amazing. I just I can't believe it's actually happening. When I was driving up today, I I saw the uh, Woodmore Peterson Institute writing on the wall for the first time and brought tears to my eyes. Uh, this is a beacon of hope for so many people. Literally so, millions of people around. Literally, the world, literally. Um, who are suffering from one form or another of neuroimmune disease. Um, there's going to be a clinic opening in the late fall. You're in the process, if I'm correct, of, of hiring a medical director. Um, when do you think you'll be able to start offering services? Well, that's a great question. Right now, we are putting together a team of physicians, and we're very, very excited, moving as quickly as we can to get all of this together. And um, we just know that it's going to happen sometime this fall. And, and uh, we're doing the best to make that happen as quickly as possible. Um, you got an amazing response, and, and rightly so, to the discovery of the retrovirus XMRV. Um, where are we with this now? And uh, because there was some debate uh, between various medical institutions as to whether this was reality or not, but things seem to be coming around to where people are following the research that you did and actually coming up with the same results. Absolutely. When the replication studies are, are done, and they're done, exactly the way that we did. They're coming up positive. Um, we're getting very strong feedback, positive feedback from the American Association of Blood Banks and working very, very closely with them. They're f excited to move forward so that they can make sure they're protecting the blood supply. And um, we are and, and always have been very confident of these results and are moving all of the science forward, including developing that next generation of diagnostic tests. Well, and it's interesting you raise this point because this is a very important issue, which is that people who are getting uh, uh, blood uh, tr uh, transplants for, uh, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, if the XMRV virus is in there, that's an, a way that they could actually get this disease. Well, we think that uh, blood transfusion is a very serious issue. Yeah, transfusion, and, not saying. Yeah, and, <laughs> well, and, and actually, you know, we've worked with a company that thinks that they have the answer to this, and um, they've developed a technology that kills all of these organisms so that we don't have to wait and respond to each new organism and each new threat. So it'll be interesting to see if the FDA decides that it's important enough um, and it makes sense to use that kind of technology. We may not have to wait for the next um, you know, unfortunate incident or, you know, finding of another new human retrovirus before we're prepared. We could be prepared right now. So, um, Andrea, your thoughts on the medical community and their response to the amazing findings from the Institute last year? Um, it's been overwhelming. <laughs> At times, uh, shocking and surprising. Um, In what way? It, the, for the patients. You know, they're very, they're not surprised that it's something so serious, but they're shocked um, that it hasn't been found until now, that the CDC and NIAID has been focused on other aspects of this disease. And um, really, there's been an outpouring of support towards the Institute and towards this research. Uh, rarely is there a person that says, 
anything negative. Um, I feel that it's mostly people that are invested in their own theories. Uh, you know. But personally, and, and I, you know, would like to add to that. Personally, I know that it's impacted Andrea's life, and and I think that's, that's the question yes. I would like to hear her say. Absolutely. A little bit. Um, I, I think I just got a co-host. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't know how to lead into that without. I, I didn't Absolutely. Know you that. Um, the research that the WPI has done and this discovery has allowed me to seek new treatments. And I'm not going to go into specifics today, but I will say that I am becoming significantly better through finding new treatments and new options with doctors who understand infectious diseases. Did you ever think that this would happen prior to this discovery? I mean, even with the discovery, did you really believe it was, uh, it was possible? I always had hope, and Amplogen gave me a glimpse into that, um, and I always had a lot of faith in the research aspect of this. I always wished there was a place for me to go when I was diagnosed at age 12. And for me to be sitting here talking about that it's my family and it's people that I love and supported me who found this incredible biomarker is really, um, <laughs> it's just out of this world for me. It's still hard to explain. You know, I have people write me on Facebook and emails and I see myself in the newspaper and it just feels kind of odd. <laughs> but it's happening. Yes. Let's take a break. More with the Whittemore is when we come back.